if you've used cable and antenna testers before, you'll know how tiresome it is having to go through the laborious process of recalibrating the instrument with an open short load before each measurement. So you'll be thrilled to discover that with the Cal Ready and Quick Cal capabilities of the Field Fox, in many situations you won't need to use a calibration kit. This is a huge time saver and especially convenient when making measurements in difficult situations, such as at the top of a mast. Let's start by sweeping this X-band microwave horn antenna with a short test cable as we would in the workshop for acceptance testing prior to going out on site. First, I press Mode and make sure we have CAT cable and antenna test selected. Then I'll press Measure and we have Return Loss selected. So I'll just set a start frequency of say uh, 5 GHz and perhaps a stop frequency of 14 GHz. And you can see we're sweeping the return loss of the antenna. I'll just change the scale to 5 dB per division so we can see it a bit more clearly. So here on the screen now we're measuring return loss. Return loss on the Y axis and frequency on the X axis. But you'll notice I've not done a calibration. Well, if I press the Cal button, you'll see we have a number of options for calibration. A simple response Cal, um, quick Cal, which I'll talk about in a moment, uh, which allows us to do a calibration with no mechanical standards required. Or, of course, we can do a full open short load calibration if we wish. But every Field Fox is pre-calibrated when it leaves the Agilent factory at this reference point here. So provided we're happy that we're going to be measuring here the response of both this cable, which is a very good quality low loss cable and quite short, and this antenna, so the display of return loss is showing us the return loss of both the antenna and the cable, then we don't need to do any calibration at all. And this may be perfectly acceptable for factory acceptance testing before you go out on site. However, if you do want to remove the effects of the test cable, or perhaps you've got a longer cable, then we'll do a quick cal. First, I'll disconnect the cable from the antenna. So I'll press cal, quick cal. A diagram on the display shows how to connect it. Dark calibration. And it says here, leave port one open, no connection. So I'll press measure. And then it goes on to step two, which is optional, which is to connect a 50 ohm load to the end of the cable. I'll skip that step and press finish. And the Phil Fox is now calibrated without using any mechanical calibration standards at all. I'll now reconnect this to the antenna. And now we're measuring the return loss of the antenna without the effects of the test cable. And as you'd expect, we can press the marker button and turn on some markers. Turn on marker one. And let's turn on another marker. And of course, we can now save that display onto a USB memory stick or SD card and include it in a report. Now let's consider another situation where we've been called out on site to troubleshoot a possible problem with an antenna installation. In this situation, we need to check the antenna, the cabling and the connectors. All must be working properly for the antenna to transmit and receive signals effectively. Typical faults include antenna or cable damage, commonly caused by lightning strikes, corrosion or accidental damage during maintenance, uh, damaged or poorly installed connectors on the RF cable, or perhaps water ingress due to insufficient waterproofing on the connector joints. As you know, for an antenna and cabling system to be working properly, every part of the system must look like a 50 ohm transmission line at the transmit and receive frequencies. Any deviation from 50 ohms will cause signal reflections along the cable, and these reflections reduce the amount of power reaching the antenna or the receiver. The distance to fault analyzer on the Field Fox identifies these reflected signals that tells us how bad the fault is and how far the fault is along the cable. So in this setup here, I'm still using the short test cable and I'm still using the same X-band microwave horn antenna, but now I've got a, a length of cable, perhaps 10 or 20 meters in between the two. So if we want to test that cable and any joiners that may be in circuit as well, then we press distance to fault. 
We're still measuring return loss on the y-axis in dB, but on the x-axis we're now measuring distance. The start distance is 0 meters. That's the calibration plane, which here, I'm just using the CalReady again, is at this point here on port 1 of the field fox. And the stop distance is 100 meters. Now, I know this cable run is less than 30 meters, so if I press the frequency distance button and select stop distance, I'll type in 30 meters. And the other thing I'll do is change the scale per division to 5 dB per division. Now on the display, we're sweeping from 0 meters to 30 meters, and we can clearly see the reflections at the various points along the cable. Now to ensure that the distance measurements and return loss measurements are accurate, you'll know that we have to tell the FieldFox what type of RF cable we're using. So if I press the Mesh Setup button and DTF Cable Specifications, and then edit save recall cables, you'll see we can recall a predefined cable, um, RG8 or one of the LMR standards or LDF standards, directly from the Field Fox's memory. And if the cable you're measuring is not in the list, you can simply add it by entering the velocity factor and loss values. You'll see here I've selected the cable type of LMR195. So now if we press the marker button and turn on a marker, Marker 1 here, if I line that up with 0 meters, you'll see there's a slight bump there in the trace. And we're getting a return loss there of about 40 dB. That's the join between the high quality test cable I have here and Field Fox's port 1 RF connector. If we move the marker along the trace, you'll see we get to the second bump here. Again, a fairly good return loss of 40 dB. And that's from where the test cable joins the LMR195. I can prove that by disconnecting it for a moment. And you'll see now we've got a 100% reflection at that distance, one meter. I'll reconnect it. Similarly, we can look for any other faults that might be on the cable. But in this case, all of these bumps here, which are due to minor cable damage, and then eventually this peak here, which is from the connector going to the fly lead on the antenna, are all well within an acceptable specification of 25 or 30 dB return loss. And finally, the very large bump on the end is, of course, the response of the antenna itself. So you can see here that the antenna is 19.44 meters from the field fox. I've now replaced what was a good quality bulkhead connector with a cheap adapter. And you can see immediately now that the response of that has increased significantly. And in fact, if we put the marker on there, you'll see that we have a return loss of 26.9 dB. Now, that may be acceptable in your setup. And in any case, it at least shows a uh, sign of perhaps degradation, uh, maybe uh, it needs to be fixed next time you're out on site. Now there's a lot simpler way of putting the marker on the peak here rather than turning the knob. If I press the marker 2 button and then go peak, you'll see marker 1 immediately goes to the highest peak on the screen. We can turn on a second marker and make that go to the next peak right. And let's turn on another marker. And let's go peak right. And then I can press marker and turn the marker table on. And we can now see on the table beneath the trace the distance in meters of each of the markers I've turned on and the return loss. So this is a marvelous way of creating a report. We can save that screen onto our USB memory stick or SD card and include that in a report or email it to a client. Now you might also have noticed that under the measure key here, uh, we can 
as well as measuring distance to fault in dB, I could have distance to fault in VSWR if you prefer VSWR. Similarly, uh, when we were measuring return loss before, we could have just measured the VSWR of the antenna. Um, we can also, interestingly, show return loss and distance to fault on the same display at the same time. And if I press the more key, we can even do a single port cable loss measurement. Now that's very useful. You'll know if you have the network analyzer option or tracking generator option, it's quite easy to do a two port measurement of cable loss, but you need both ends of the cable connected to the field fox. In the case where the cable is located on a mast and you've only got access to one end of it, this ability the field fox has to measure cable loss just by connecting it to one end of the cable is really quite superb when out on site. In summary, we've been able to make return loss and VSWR measurements of antennas, distance to fault, return loss and VSWR measurements of cables and antenna systems, and we can even measure the loss of cables just by connecting to one end of the cable. And at no time did we use a calibration kit. Of course, you can still use the traditional open short load calibrations that you're used to, but with the field fox, in many instances, you may not need to. For further information on the Agilent FieldFox microwave analyzer, please contact your local representative or visit the website shown below. <laughs>